Next category, MotoGP. MotoGP. Another exciting one. This time it is literally exciting. Um, it, it was epic. It was sensational, wasn't Just it? Just having Ducati and Ferrari win on the same weekend. How beautiful is that, especially oh, for this radio station? Unbelievable! Oh, yeah, oh, oh. how good for the Italians! Fantastic! And let's let's get let's talk um, about the sprint race, which oh, was boy. fairly heartbreaking any for anyone who was leading. No one wanted to win. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. weird. It was crazy. You know, um, they are so on the edge oh, every single lap of a sprint race because you know it's strategy tire strategy goes out the window no. everyone's on softs i mean apart from a few and they're just absolutely going for it. it i mean ralph fernandez you know for aprilia was driving you know was riding brilliantly and then we had the brad binder which i find it really really fascinating what's going on this year brad binder was the face of ktm he mm -hmm. literally they probably had a statue of him <laughs> and within a couple of rounds a rookie has absolutely mentally destroyed this person. <laughs> he has massacred his confidence yeah. and has taken over the role as the yep. number one on the privateer bike. It's yeah. crazy. Well, actually, speaking of which, obviously Jack Miller had a crash in, I think actually both races, or was it just this? I think it was just both, the one yeah. yeah, I think it was both. Is he in danger before the season ends? Yeah, I mean, there are talks at the moment of um, Miller looking potentially at Repsol Honda. Ooh. Um, there are talks of Juan Mia wanting... Wait, is this for next year? For next year. I'm saying before the year ends. No. He'll be no. right for the year. He'll be you right sure? He'll be right. He right keeps right. crashing. At least crashed out of six. No, how many races have there? There's been six. I think he's crashed out of four, they said. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah. It's been pretty bad. But I think for this year, he'll be safe. Um, They're not going to do the rider swap mid-season or any of that. But mm. I think for next year, Jack is currently looking at Repsol Honda. That could be appealing because Juan Mia is looking to get out. Marini said no. Marini said he will stick it out. That it's wow. just been rumors, and that none of, none of them are true. So it looks like Juan Mia might go. Jack might take that spot, which I think would be fascinating. And yeah, Pedro. I mean, it's just Pedro will go to factory ATM. ATM yeah, no doubt. He might get other phone calls too. How, oh, good, how good was he though? Wasn't he? Yeah, well, unfortunately, I, I don't know why they put him on softs. I think that's what got him Yeah, definitely. in the end. Because mm -hmm. only four riders was on the softs. So it was for Marquez. The, for the, yeah, Marquez, yeah. unbelievable. If he can qualify better than 14th, <laughs> yeah, he can win a lot of races. Definitely. He's starting just so far back. He's just on the back foot all the time. Even in Le Mans, he started 14th, I think, or 13th, and came second. Yeah, yeah. if it wasn't for that, he probably would have won multiple races this year. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. Le Mans, uh, Le Mans for sure. But look, the sprint uh, was uh, phenomenal as always. Um, it looked like a formality for Bagnaya to finally win a sprint race this year, and then oh. with nine corners to go, oh, yeah, yeah, I <laughs> crashed. I, mean, I just couldn't believe it. I mean, I mean, a, a great present for Alicia Spargo, who literally led nine gonna, corners. Yeah, Alicia Spargo <laughs> is retiring at the end of the year, and he's a you know he's won a sprint race. That's a special story, at least. It is, it yeah. is, yeah, and you know in front of his home crowd, in front of his family, and his, his little kids are there. It, it's beautiful, but again, you know, like Marquez went from this time from 14th to second in the sprint, and even beating Jorge Martin. And when people are talking about this battle for the second seat at Ducati as a mm. factory rider, mm. it should technically be straightforward i mean jorge martin is winning he's mm -hmm. leading the championship he's very mm -hmm. dominant but the question and forever in a day in motorsport it's always been uh, win on sunday sell on monday mm -hmm. and now i'm going to ask you both this question yeah who can sell more ducatis mark marquez or jorge martin yeah well this is the problem it's marquez yeah it's, it's marquez. not even it's not even a question however <laughs> However, didn't Ducati have this issue about three years ago when they got uh, Bastianini in? And that was Martin versus Bastianini? Yeah. And they chose Bastianini. And mm. no offense, but I think that was the wrong call. Definitely. And now they're paying the price. And Martin's going to pay an even bigger price because we just said, I think Marquez would be better there. And yeah. Oh, 14th and 2nd. Yeah, well, I'm not denying the results, but Martin's winning the championship. Well, that, yeah. You can't overlook that too. Yeah, exactly. The other thing as well, strategically from a Ducati point of view, is you have to give Marquez a GP25 next year. Yeah. So potentially you have a privateer winning the championship this year, 
and potentially a privateer winning the championship next year. If he's not a Ducati. If he's not a Ducati, but it looks yeah. like it will be at Ducati yeah. some way. So also as a factory team, you can't run that. You can't have the privateer teams beat the factory team. No. And that's, sad. that's something that, you know, it's an unspoken rule. Yeah. They're never going to say it, but we're the factory team. The factory team wins. Well, that's, the th that's why I think that Jorge Martin's even more impressive. And not only has he done this this year, but the last two years he's competed for the championship. He's just yeah. fallen short at the end of the year. At the moment, he's the fastest runner. Like, yeah. At the moment, on a, on a one lap pace, just the way he has the confidence on the brakes, uh, the way he's able to, you know, to manage his tires, he's hungry. You know, that really hurt last year in Valencia when he lost the title. You know, you could see how badly he wanted to be world champion. And it's going to be an interesting battle. I think the sprint was spectacular. But I think in the main race, uh, you know, Bagnaya showed that on his, on his day, when he's mm. good with the bike, with the setup and everything, you know, they, because initially in the first part of the race, we thought it was a Jorge Martin win for sure. Yeah. But... You know, the second for half and how he, you know, Magnaia managed his tires and the lead that he was able to pull once he got got past the Orge. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be a spectacular battle. Alrighty, we'll just go through the results for the uh, Spanish Grand Prix uh, for the MotoGP. We had, uh, obviously, Magnaia win the race. Uh, Jorge Martin second. Mark Marquez running off another great comeback in uh, third position. Uh, Alicia Spargo, fourth place on the Aprilia. Uh, fifth place was Fabio Di Giantonio. Uh, sixth place, Raul Fernandez, in um, probably the best weekend of his career. Definitely. definitely. And, and Fabio, you know, Fabio Di Giantonio, that's a, that's a solid result because yeah. that GP23 is slower than a GP24. It's just that Marcus is an alien. <laughs> and he's able to do those results. So, 100%. first of the 23s. Yeah, well, shout out to Fabio as well. That he almost didn't have a seat or like a ride this year. Sorry. Yeah. So, to finish fifth. And yeah, he's been pretty consistent all year. And ahead of uh, Bezeki, which is, you know, the golden boy. Um, yeah, that's been a big, big, big shock. Yes. Big shock. Uh, yeah. So, seventh place was Alex Marquez. It was also on the soft tire. Uh, Brad Binder, we've mentioned before, in eighth place. Uh, ninth place was uh, Fabio Quartararo on first, the Yamaha. And first of the Japanese bikes. Yeah, ninth place. That's sad. Um, <laughs> it's true, though. It's they, true. Used, they used to be so good, and now they're best. I mean, ninth. 2009, you know, the legendary battle of Rossi Lorenzo for yeah. the win. It's and crazy to think. And he only won the championship. How many, how many years ago was that? Two. Yeah. 2021. Yeah, there you go. I guess money talks, though, because he's staying there for a while. Oh, yeah. Uh, Miguel, yeah, he, he goes. I'm in it for the motorsport while he's got chains everywhere. Yeah, literally. <laughs> I'm in. I'm in it for the passion. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Not the money at all. Uh, Miguel Oliveira uh, rounds out the top ten. Trackhouse racing double top ten. That's really good. Yeah, on their sixth race. That's Very the good. the David Abrevio factor. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Marco Bezzecchi we just mentioned in eleventh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Maverick Vinales in twelfth uh, place. Then we had Pedro Costa, who was in the top two, fighting for the lead, but unfortunately had a crash. But did get up and came well. back to thirteenth. Well, not only that, but his pace was three tenths of a second behind Jorge Martin, with half of his bike broken on on the left hand side. Like it's yeah, it was yeah. crazy. Unbelievable. Well, speaking of broken bikes, Marquez also had damage in the sprint, and he still finished second. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't have one of the front aero I, things. I, I think this result, the, those poor Hondas, you know, you're running oh, so around, sad. you're trying as hard as you can. A guy can crash. We haven't even got to a Honda. Bike. We yeah. haven't even got to a Honda yet. I know. We're about to. We're about he, to. He's next. Yeah. He passed four Hondas. Yeah. And he, how many laps did he have? Like 15? Yeah. After the crash? Uh, anyway, yeah, speaking of Hondas, uh, Takanakagami uh, leading the way uh, in 14th. And um, Juan Mir. 15th, Zarco, 16th, 17th was Luca Marini. So all the Hondas here. Uh, Naya Bastioni, who would just refuse to take a penalty. Oh, yes. Yeah, that was weird. He had a, So if you don't know, he did get a long lap penalty for passing, I think, uh, sorry, going off the track and taking a shortcut on Alex Marquez. I'm on Naya's side here. Like, he didn't get the move. He got forced off the track. And then he didn't go in front of him. He stayed behind him. Yeah. But you meant to. 
give a second. I think it is. Yeah, but let's okay. So you're getting on your dashboard, long lap that. Yeah, that, that's still not. And yeah. then and then you think to yourself, okay, that must have been a mistake. But then when you get two long lap two. penalties, then it's not a mistake anymore. You're being told, hey. And then even better, a ride through penalty. <laughs> and you're like, that. yeah, no, nah, I think I'm <laughs> screwed anyway. I'm just gonna finish. I'm just not doing anything today. Okay. No, he's just protesting. And he's lost, but he's protesting. That's basically all it is. Good to yeah. see um, Ocon and MotoGP. <laughs> <laughs> very good point uh stefan brother was just a fifth um honda rider and then alex Rins, i don't know what happened to alex Rins because he was he ran wide behind jorge martin on, at turn one yes then went off the he track almost took out jorge martin yes 100 percent. but he was at the front yes how did he finish 20th because he was coming he, uh, he was last at the end of lap one because of that but then i saw him get up to about 13th 14th it must have had a crash. Must, or... No, it didn't have a crash. It was just something in pace. Yeah. Well, it was unbelievable. He just fell. fell. At, and... the, at the moment, the, the drop in grip that the Japanese bikes are having is just unbelievable. Yeah. So, but there's still 63 seconds. That's and scary. Catalonia is a very hard track on tires, too. Yeah. Very, and, no grip. and the heat was immense. Um, yeah, speaking of no grip, unfortunately, the non classified finishers was Franco Morbidelli, who, shout out to him, was in seventh. He was doing really well, too. He was seventh, but I find it fascinating that he turned around and said, I'm going to give Ducati something to talk about. And yeah, I mean, yeah, you've definitely given us something. Well, we're to talking talk about, about it right now. We're yeah, talking exactly. about yeah. so, <laughs> you. Yeah. Unfortunately, not, not what he wanted. To talk yeah, about. Yeah. We're talking about you. Yeah. yeah, exactly. He's uh, got a super bike next year. There's no way he gets to keep that seat. Franco? No, it's yeah. impossible. Well, another one that could be also threatened is uh, Augusto Fernandez. Um, definitely. Yeah. There's a few riders that may not be there next year, but we'll see. And then, yeah, our homeboy, Jack Miller, was the first one to fall. Yes. Overall, overall, yeah. Look, I mean, an exciting Grand Prix. It always is. Um, the sprint for me was the highlight. The race itself was, a, you know, I mean, super exciting compared it more, to... more tamed. It was more tamed. Sprint. But the sprint, uh, the sprint is just uh, um, absolutely crazy. Um, there are talks at the moment. Uh, there are rumors going around the paddock at the moment that Andrea Iannone could be making a comeback next yep. year. Uh, Pramac uh, are currently, you know, the golden team of uh, privateer teams for Ducati, but they are considering switching to Yamaha, which is crazy. I hope they don't do that. It's I hope crazy. They don't do it. And um, yeah, a year nine, you know, look, does it deserve a seat in MotoGP compared to some of the younger riders which are coming up in Moto2? Probably not. But does he bring a lot of sponsors? Yes, he does. Mm -hmm. Yep, 100%. But the next race is next week, and it's Mugello. I know. Like, you can't not watch this race. It's oh, so good. I'm going to be in my Airbnb at Morgan Park. Oh, yeah. And I'm <laughs> going to be glued to that screen. Good. It's so good because I get to watch Moto3, Moto2, MotoGP. I get to watch the whole thing. With no interruptions. With no interruptions. And then you go to sleep and you go in a race car next to it. Well, no, no. You finished. Uh, well, no, I'm finished. Yeah. You'd be in a race car, then go to the Airbnb and watch MotoGP all night. Amazing. Sounds good. I might. I might join you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> cancel my plans. Hopefully, you can focus on your race. <laughs> I'm well, too excited for what's uh, coming up after the race. 